Hey, I'm Sophie Haskins. Today on Pizzabox.computer, I'm installing Next Step on a PA Risk workstation. Before I dive in, I want to talk a little bit about what that means. Next Step was an operating system from Next, the company that Steve Jobs founded in 1985 after he was pushed out of Apple. It's Unix based, but has lots of advanced features that didn't become commonplace for years after. In the late 90s, Next was acquired by Apple, who used Next Step as the basis for their next generation operating system, Mac OS X. PA Risk is a platform developed by HP in the 1980s. They developed it to power new generations of both their HP 3000 mini computers and HP 9000 workstations and servers. At the end of the 90s, HP partnered with Intel to make the Itanium platform, hoping to replace PA Risk. The Itanium rollout didn't go quite as well as they had hoped, but that's a story for another day. So how do Next Step and PA Risk relate to each other? Next originally sold their own workstation hardware, but in the beginning of the 90s, their competitors were developing Risk architectures and Next couldn't keep up. They started selling their Next Step operating system for other architectures, including PA Risk. To install Next Step, I'm going to need a few ingredients. Number one, my workstation. The HP 712-60. Number two, a hard drive to install too. Any hard drive that works with this workstation is about 20 years old at this point and probably closer to 30. Instead of taking a risk on a dying drive, I'm going to use a SCSI to SD, a neat little adapter that lets you use a micro SD card as a SCSI hard drive. I use these all the time in my projects. There's a link to the maker of them in the video description. Number three, I need a CD-ROM drive and a CD to install from. Number four, I need a cable and terminator to hook the CD-ROM drive up. Fifth, and finally, I need a keyboard, mouse, and a monitor with a VGA input, which has been in the background the whole time. Something that's pretty nice about this model, the HP 712, is that it uses pretty standard PC style plugs. PS2 for the keyboard and the mouse, VGA for the monitor, and SCSI for the CD-ROM drive. This is probably the only time in my life that I will ever say that having SCSI is pretty nice. With everything plugged in, let's get started. Got to make sure the CD-ROM drive is on before booting up the computer. I'll insert the disk, turn on the computer, and here we go. Let's see. The CD-ROM happens to be SCSI ID 5. So we will boot from there. Well, that wasn't what I wanted. It turns out this CD-ROM drive is broken. It crapped out for the last project I tried to use it for too. It would be cool to try and repair it. Maybe I'll make a video of that in the future. For now though, I'm going to put the drive away and use one of the cool features of the SCSI to SD. It can pretend to be a hard drive and a CD-ROM drive at the same time. Just have to take it out and reprogram it. Starting from the default settings, I want to enable SCSI 2 mode. That'll make it a bit faster. Then the first device will be my hard drive. It needs to be ID6. Otherwise, the defaults are fine. Then, the second device will be my CD-ROM drive at ID3. I think the biggest CDs are 700 megabytes, so I'll set that as the size. The hard drive and CD drive need to take up different parts of the SD card, so I'll start the CD after the hard drive ends. Next step is pretty choosy about hard drive geometry, so I have to change some settings that are hidden from the SCSI to SD util interface. I'll save the config to an XML file, then open that in a text editor. I need to find the hard drive settings, 
and change the sectors per track and heads per cylinder. Once those are set, we can save the file and re-import the config file from SCSI to SDUtil. Now we're all set to program the device. If you're curious about these settings, check out my blog post where I go into this in more detail. There will be a link in the video description. Next, I have to load the install CD onto the SD card. I put it into my Mac and looked up which drive the Mac refers to it by in Disk Utility. Then, I can use the DD utility to write the install ISO directly to the SD card. Remember how I had to make sure the hard drive and CD drive parts of the SD card didn't overlap? The seek parameter on the DD command tells it to find the CD drive part of the card and write there. This process takes about five minutes. I've put the SCSI to SD back in my workstation, and I'm ready to try the install again. I'll boot from the fake CD drive on SCSI ID 3. Hey, we're getting somewhere. This is the Next Step bootloader. If you're familiar with Linux, it's doing pretty much the same thing as Grub or Lilo. I want to install in English. I am prepared to install Next Step. And it looks like it's booting up. Okay, yes, I want to install on my fake hard drive. And yeah, let's start the install. It's gonna format the hard drive for a bit. Mine took about five minutes. When that's done, the installer begins copying files from the CD-ROM to the hard disk. This took about another 12 minutes. Once the copying is done, I have to restart, this time booting from the hard drive instead of the CD. Oh hey, we got some graphics this time. This bit looks like it's in black and white. Hmm, it seems to be grumpy because my workstation isn't connected to a network. I'm fine with that for now, so I'll just press Control-C. Oh hey, that isn't in black and white. Here it's giving me an opportunity to change device settings. I've looked through this before and the defaults are fine, so I'm just gonna click save. Now I get to choose software to install. I'm just gonna install everything and get it rolling right away because this part takes a little while. Let's see what we picked. A couple of extra languages, some demo programs, documentation, the Webster's English Dictionary and illustrations, online help. Hmm, I wonder how that's different from the documentation. Sounds kind of the same to me. We've got some printer descriptions and image setters, Emacs, Oh, I shouldn't have installed that. I use VI. And we've got tech for laying out documents. Very cool. This part of the process takes about 25 minutes. When it's done, I get to reboot again. Now I'll be booting from the hard drive again.
Let's see. It's still grumpy about not being on the network. Don't worry, that'll be part of the next video in this series. And we've got the welcome screen. It reminds me of when you install OS X. I guess this part survived for quite a while. I'm okay with English and a USA keyboard. Oh snap, there we are, a desktop. It looks like this install was a success. I've got Next Step 3.3 running on an HP PA RISC workstation. That's all I have for you today, but if you're interested in learning more about Next Step, I'm planning on this being a multi-part series. The next video will be about hooking it up to a network and finding more useful software. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll run across that video once I make it. Thanks a ton for watching!